For most water utilities, a large part of their revenues come from their commercial and industrial customers. Therefore, understanding the proper methodology of sizing, selecting, and installing those meters is extremely important. In part seven of this series, we're going to take a closer look into electronic meters. We'll study three things, how they work, what their typical operating ranges are, and lastly, we'll take a look at seven distinct metering criteria and see how they stack up against electronic meters. Let's dive into it. As with our other lessons on metering technology, we're going to cover three topics related to electronic ultrasonic meters. We're going to cover how they work, we'll talk about their typical operating ranges, and then we'll compare this technology against our seven distinct metering characteristics. Before we get started, I do want to make note of a few differentiating features related to electronic meters versus their mechanical counterparts, turbines or compounds. These meters today, the electronic meters, are becoming more like sensors. Some of these meters have built-in pressure, built-in temperature, to give you additional diagnostics that you won't get out of their mechanical counterparts. So these meters not only are no moving part meters, right, allowing them to last a bit longer, they also have some added capabilities related to sensors as well. Well, let's move into watching a quick video on how the technology actually works. The newest evolution in metering technology is the Badger Meter E-Series ultrasonic meter for portable, reclaim, and residential fire service applications. Unlike mechanical water meters, which rely on moving parts to measure water flow, the E-Series ultrasonic meter has no moving parts. It uses solid state electronics, transit time ultrasonic measurement technology. Here's how it works. Inside each E-Series meter, two electronic transducers send high-frequency sound signals consecutively in forward and reverse directions. An onboard microprocessor turns the water data into useful, actionable information. Information that's highly accurate to within 1.5% over the normal operating range of the meter and within 3% at extended low flows. E-Series meters have the same high out-of-box performance as their record-all counterpart, but are warranted to maintain their accuracy over time because there's no mechanical movement and nothing to wear. Well, from that video, you should really now start to understand that these meters have no moving parts, and of course, the reading is actually simply done in the case of an ultrasonic meter by just simply sending that sound wave and then measuring how fast it goes in the forward and then how fast it goes in the reverse and then being able to calculate that velocity, okay? When we look at the typical ultrasonic meters today, they were really introduced into the market at some of the smaller sizes, the 5 eighths, 3 quarter, 1 inch, but these meters are actually being broadened into the larger sizes as well. And I do see many utilities taking to the larger sizes as some of the, the applications where they're first starting. So I'm showing all the way through four inch. However, there are certain manufacturers that make these all the way up until a 12 inch size when it comes to ultrasonics. Well, let's take a look at one of the five eighths meters and compare this against maybe its, its mechanical counterpart, a positive displacement Newtoning disc. When you look at this meter at the five eighths inch size, the typical operating range goes from eight one hundredths all the way up to 30 gallons per minute. Now the interesting thing about this is when you compare that to its mechanical counterpart, let's say positive displacement nutating disc, which its operating range goes from a half gallon all the way up to 25 gallons per minute. When you think about the low side of this meter where you're trying to get those very low flows to make sure you're getting the accuracy, you're getting a 144% increase in the low flow capabilities of this meter, measuring down to eight one hundredths versus a half gallon per minute. Now the other thing to note here is the high side of this meter, this high side of the operating range, is wider than its mechanical counterpart as well, comparing 30 gallons per minute here compared to 25 gallons or 20 gallons per minute in the case of some manufacturers. So you get a wider operating range from this meter, both low and high. The other thing to note here, because I've got no moving parts, 
my maximum continuous duty is the same as the top side of my operating range, right? Because this meter can't wear out. If it can run 30 gallons per minute, it can run 30 gallons per minute all the time, continuously. The other thing about this, think about having 30 gallons per minute. This may allow you to take an application where you may have upgraded to a three quarter inch with a mechanical meter and now be able to apply a five eighths inch electronic meter in that same application and now get all the way up to that 30 gallons per minute. The extended low flow for this meter goes all the way down to four one hundredths of a gallon. That's plus or minus 3%, but think about what you're able to get now. Some of those very fine leaks and drips that you would have in a, in a person's home that normally you wouldn't be collecting any revenue for, you're now going to start being able to collect revenues for those very fine flows. Let's move our, our discussion into one of the larger meters, let's say the three inch meter. The three inch meter, if we were to compare that most likely up against a compound meter, take a look at the operating range here. You're measuring accurately down to three quarters of a gallon per minute, all the way up to 560 gallons per minute, a very wide operating range. And then again, that max continuous duty, because I don't have any moving parts, is going to be the same as my high side of my operating range. And then I have a great extended low flow capability measuring down to three eighths of a gallon per minute. Let's compare this meter up against the other meters that we've talked about in the past. If we look at the different criteria here, as we all know, the ultrasonic meter is an inferential meter. I'm actually measuring velocity right here with the sound wave. I'm sending a sound wave in the forward and I'm sending a sound wave in the backward flow. And I'm measuring how fast the velocity of water is causing that sound wave to go faster in the forward and then slower in the reverse. Or if I have flow going the opposite way, my signal going in the reverse would be faster than the one going in the forward position, right? So that's how I know if I have reverse flow. That flow range ratio from high to low is very comparable to that of a compound meter, right? Getting that accuracy very low. In the case of a three inch compound, I can measure down to a quarter of a gallon per minute in this case, I can measure down to three quarters of a gallon on the ultrasonic, but look at the high side of that. The high side of the ultrasonic is much higher in the same size than is the compound meter. Low flow sensitivity, again, I'd compare it to a compound. I would say it would be excellent. And then the head loss is excellent because this is a completely open tube design. That makes it so you nearly have no head loss going through this meter. When you look at the maintenance periods of this, this is the best meter on the market for that because there are no moving parts. I've got no maintenance that I have to do for this meter. I've had people ask me that question, is there any type of buildup on the sensors inside? Uh, I, I know in the case of meters that have been in the market for probably 10 or 12 years, I have not seen that be the case. So maintenance periods is great in this type of meter. Your purchase price, when you compare it to a turbine, on some sizes is really near, quite near that price of a turbine, but some other sizes, it might be one and a half times that cost of a turbine meter. But when you look at the capability here, it has much more capability and less maintenance than you would have on a turbine meter. What is this meter engineered for? It is engineered for the ultra low flows as well as the high flows. So the resounding theme of an ultrasonic meter, it is a very flexible meter that fits many types of applications. My hope is this review now covering all the different types of meters here, you're able to now start to see where each one of these meters really fits and which types of applications that it fits best into. If you have any questions about today's topic, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below and I'll personally provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have any questions related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day, what other aspects of meter sizing, selection, and installation do you want to know more about? Please provide your question in the comment section below. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. And if you have a colleague that would benefit from listening to this episode on sizing and selection, be sure to share it with them by clicking the share button. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time 
on the Smart Water Show.